Hi everyone, my name is Raina Sabir. I'm an architect and the topic of my presentation is the expression of death in architectural space, a study in poetics. Introduction. So there are three phases uh, in this presentation. In the first phase, I'm performing research in order to understand the various expressions of death in modern times with the views relating death, the importance of its place in the world and the translation of it through various expressions and forms. In phase two, I'm studying Eliot's Wasteland in reference of the meaning of death uh, can in order to develop a spatial definition of death in the end. Uh, then building a relationship between death and space through poetic text based on the understanding that I had from Eliot's Wasteland. And in the final phase, I'm constructing five spaces uh, followed with experiential drawings and uh, which and, and through which you can understand the occurrence of metamorphosis uh, within each space. Phase 1. I'm studying various expressions of death studied in modern times. In philosophy, in literature, painting, sculpture, film and case studies. In philosophy, I'm studying three main philosophers, Jörg Paul Sartre, Sigmund Freud, and Martin Heidegger. According to Jörg Paul Sartre, death is something which comes to us from the outside and transforms us. To be dead, Sartre writes, is to be a prey for the living. Freud's book, Beyond the Pleasure Principle essay, he mentions his famous death drive theory, which is the drive towards death. It's an urge in organic life to restore to an earlier state of things. According to him, the aim of all life is death. Martin Heidegger stresses that the view of consciousness of death shatters and collapses the ordinaries of everyday existence and liberates us. He stresses that the consciousness of death heightens and intensifies one's individual self-awareness. It is only in being towards death that one can truly become the person who he is. Heidegger famously calls being towards death. He says, if our being is finite, then an authentic human life can only be found by confronting finitude and trying to make a meaning out of the fact of our death. In literature, we study Death of Ivan Illich, written by Leo Tolstoy in 1886. The people, according to him, the people don't understand death because they cannot really comprehend their own death. For them, death is something objective, which is not happening to them. They see death as Ivan, the character did all his life, as an objective event rather than a subjective existential experience. Kafka presents us with his metamorphosis. In metamorphosis, he allows one's hidden self to emerge, the self that has been stifled for so long, and only through metamorphosis one can attain the liberation. Siddhartha by Hermann Hesse in 1922. Siddhartha recognizes life and death in everything. Fearing the death of his spirit, Siddhartha experiences the death of a part of himself as a step towards his spiritual salvation, that is, to reach Nirvana. The Wall by Jean-Paul Sartre in 1939. He Sartre thinks that the thought of death does not restrict sensations, rather it enhances them. The wall in the title of the story can either be viewed as a barrier or a space, which is letting the being encounter events that can enlighten it. The Stranger by Albert Camus in 1942. Camus shows us how facing the possibility of death does have an effect on one's perception of life. The central theme is that the significance of human life is understood only in light of mortality. Camus uses the idea, used the idea of death as a vehicle to perpetuate his idea of absurdity. Throughout the story, one can find various instances of representing the indifference that he felt towards the world. Many paintings are studied in order to understand various expressions relating to the concept of death. Ophelia by Sir John Everett Millais in 1852. You can clearly see that she has not fought her death but welcomed it, as the surrendering hands and unrestrained limbs show. Lips still parted from the snatches of the song she sang as she died. One can merely observe how 
One can merely think how she must have felt the light slowly fading away beneath the water as she giving up her life. Death in the Sick Room by Edwin Munch in 1895 The loneliness of death each retreats into his or her own lonely self. Every character in the painting seems to be mourning in their own selves. Death and Life by Gustav Klimt, 1910 Life is always being observed with a degree of malice. Death may strike any moment, following a certain circle of life. Guernica by Pablo Picasso, 1937. It shows a devastating and chaotic impact of war, the brutalization and dehumanization of humanity during wartime, and a holistic response that all living things share in the face of fear and death, and can be clearly expressed through the expressions of the characters seen in the painting. The Suicide of Dorothy Hale by Farida Kahlo, 1938. Details of every step of Hale's suicide, standing on the balcony, falling to her death. The absoluteness of death, the wonder and helplessness, and the chaos of the free fall can be observed in the painting. Death and Fire by Paul Klee, 1940. The representation of his idea and the simple colors to portray death. The sense was that he was approaching death, and this was his desperate attempt for him to show what he was feeling at the moment. Untitled Black on Grey, Mark Rothko, 1970. Premonitions of his death. Contrast dark with light evokes a sadness that plays out like a psychological drama, evoking different moods. The sculpture is merely studied to understand the translation of the expressions into certain forms. Hands holding the word by Alberto Giacometti, 1934. This embodies the terrifying line between the two states of being and the unimaginable moment between questions of life and death, absence and presence, existence and nothingness. Head Skull by Alberto Giacometti Head, skull, and face in life and death, as if alive. It is what unites life and death of the face, head, and the bones, and it penetrates their unity. The sculpture is merely a collective representation of life and death. Brian's Cemetery by Carlos Scarpa. It shows a certain poetic imagination approaching death in a social and civic way. According to Scarpa, he found what meaning there was in death in the ephemerality of life other than these shoe boxes that we create in graveyards. He highlights the inwardness through the forms, a place where you can feel and talk to yourself. The cemetery represents a form of a journey. Once the visitor has entered the enclave, they are at once engulfed by seamlessly harmonious architectural structures, acting to memorialize not just death but celebrate life. The finalization of death invites the community to this place of tranquility for peaceful meditation and reflection rather than sorrow. Jewish Memorial Berlin by Peter Eisenman There is this sense of getting lost in this memorial, a place this has been created where it can be grasped what loneliness, powerlessness and despair mean. In this monument there is no entrance, there is no goal, there is no end. The duration of individual experience of it grants no further understanding, since everything is impossible in these spaces. Films by Andrei Tarkovsky were clearly studied as they were very good in expression to the concept of death. The films like Mirror, Stalker, Nostalgia, and Solaris by Tarkovsky were very uniquely cinematic and communicated emotions very well. The characters are etched into their spatial settings and external spaces are the inner mental spaces of the characters. The architecture seen in these films is an unforeseen chamber of music of space, light, and slow time. His main aim was to have the audience discover meaning for themselves. 
Tarkovsky creates some kind of architectural metamorphosis. He takes the way the building's mask of utility, revealing the vulnerability of its structures conceived for eternity. He makes the viewer invest his feelings and empathy in the naked structure. What more better way to represent the meaning of helplessness than to show a woman watching her livelihood burn in front of her eyes? Phase 2. Studying T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland in Reference of Death T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland T.S. Eliot was born in St. Louis, Missouri in 1888. He was one of the eminent and prominent figures as the poet of war who was able to depict the real picture of the crisis time known as the Age of Worry. The theme of the poem is the spiritual and emotional sterility of the modern world. Eliot is basically speaking through many voices and characters in the course of the poem. All of them see what is around them as a wasteland. The reader gets a variety of insights into the state of consciousness which the poem is portraying. Though the wasteland seems to have no logical structure or continuity of development, we have in the episodes, images, ideas and reflections, apparently is left to his own device to go from passage to passage. The wasteland is comprised of five main parts with an epigraph following. Epigraph, the burial of the dead, a game of chess, the fire sermon, death by water and what the thunder said. There are many spatial instances in Wasteland. Eliot is basically inviting the reader to consider these instances for themselves. There are many fragrance which, are, which may help one to interpret the present in terms of the past and to recreate a reality that can be seen out of this juxtaposition. Eliot uses foils, these oppositions within his depiction of space as tools to fully express his vision of the world where one type of space in the initiating part of the poem may construct the foreground of the poem setting, while another may act as the background, allowing the reader to fully witness the bigger picture. Furthermore, each spatial instance treated as its own entity had a meaning in and of itself. These spaces are offered, these spaces offered us a glimpse into the real psyches and thoughts of his poetic characters. Epigraph in the poem, Sybil of Cumae, hanging in a glass bottle, and she says, I long to die. This epigraph indicates the main theme or emotion of the poem. It presents an image of literally suspended life, that is, the death you can find in life. These drawings were made in order to understand the concept of death that can be uh, seen in Eliot's The Wasteland poem. So it has the main five parts, follows these five main basic drawings. Uh, the Burial of the Dead is the first part, is chiefly concerned with the world within the mind, arousing various memories, going deeper into the dark memories of the speaker, arising questions of what lies beneath the surface. The second one is the Game of Chess, which focuses on the images of the world existing outside and certain melancholy is present in between. Death is being slowly brought on the surface changing its form, twisting and turning. The third part, the fire sermon, deals with the pursuit of aimless pleasures. It connects with poet's own spiritual malaise, the inner self which is screaming towards its own fall. The fourth part, death by water, reminds us of the survival of consciousness after death and the death is being confronted in this part. While the final and the final part, the, what the thunder said speaks about the divine guidance, the poet's own self-examination which reveals the barrenness of one's existence, enabling him to achieve a certain peace of mind through his words which were Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. In Eliot's Wasteland, we have found a certain journey of death uh, through all of his parts. Uh, so concluding uh, Elliot's Wasteland, we have developed a certain definition of death, which is in fact a journey, which we will, fo which we will further follow uh, exploring the five spaces. 
so uh, there is a world of awakening and the uncanniness of the space to the inner suffocation of the absence within moving towards the space of indifference and surrenderment of one's own self to deep rooted layers of consciousness followed with an utter silence that takes you towards eternal reach phase 3 architecture as a mode of expression the five spaces so uh, after performing research in modern times through various modes and studying elites wasteland and extracting a definition of death uh, this is the final phase of my project in which we are building five spaces these five spaces will explore the speciality of death how the spaces will change our frame after frame towards their true meaning so the process of understanding this uh, final phase is uh there are certain drawings experiential drawings that i have made and then i've uh, carved the spaces uh, of those drawings in are uh, in a sculptural form and the photographs will represent the sculptural spaces that i've built and i will read the text poetic text and you will understand the spaces that i'm talking about through the drawings and through the frame frames awakening what was that noise was that the noise of the wind pacing through the air trying to pass through the cracks or was that the gasping heard from the corner holding the entire burden inside what is it what is it which cannot be seen are the walls overshadowing it with its height or is it the dust in the air speaking of light in that warm speck of light i saw the cold hands holding the sharp ends of the coiled wire through the punctured hole gripping it strongly were numb to it the throbbing of the heart was heard but it was forgotten absorbed lost away with the rest what was it what were the wrinkles on the ceiling saying to her couldn't tell maybe passing their message along through the crooked alley in her eyes i saw the reflection of the dawn's light through the cracks breaking it into pieces and within found nothing though among the nothingness she found glimpses of the clear blue sky i saw the shadow in the evening sitting with her in silence on the unsettling soil and with the turn of the evening into night the shadow left her sight going back with the stairs vanishing into nothing tam tam squelch cackle clack 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 Black. Second space suffocation and helplessness I found her silhouette at a landing confused as if lost her way for the sky was too far and only the earth was close by and in the silent air the dust turned into thick fog so dense making it too difficult to see too heavy to breathe amidst that dense mist one could hear the dripping by her ear is this all in my head she wondered or are the pathways getting narrower is this real because the cracks on the ceiling are visible she could see the direction they took is this happening because the walls are getting closer to her eyes the brightness of the light had a burning presence the droplets that fell were instantly lost in the air as they touched the earth gone and away with the wind through a tiny hole how can the sky look so infinite yet felt so thin at the same time she thought still there far away from the nothing rises the life in a void full of light but what to do with the light that would soon fade away with night the wind moaning against the thick walls trapped inside to free her flight she moved her hands to reach into a void unable to touch unable to hold on to it so close it was unable to reach that speck of light standing at the bottom of the stair i found looking with despair at all the steps rising above her unable to climb she stood nowhere with huge walls hiding away the fright she saw everything with her anxious eyes the soul wanting to fight but were lost in the smoke rising up the void now empty with light third space indifference and surrender the sun was still there and so were the shadow 
the light enlightening the darkness before the cold night, falling on the pieces, revealing the meaninglessness of its rays. Though the lashing of the wind has lost its touch, the dust doesn't choke anymore, the water in the well has lost its reflection, the pathways di their direction, and so the wall stood in silence. She found everything in the nothingness of it, seeing the unseen in that silent light, the spaces getting tight in the void, the light fading away at night, didn't matter. The eyes surrendered, and so did the soul. It was tired and just wanted to hold, hold on to the last glance of light, leaving the wall, to the rays diffused in the dust, hold on to the shattered reflections of the sky unveiled. The warmth of the light could reach from far above, with the darkness leaving the walls all on their own. She saw the stories at every step, reminding her of her own, finding herself within, melting away with the light, hence was awaited so forth. The corridors freed themselves from the surrounding dust, giving themselves up to the light of the clear blue sky. And up it goes. Remembrance With the darkness approaching her sight, she could finally sense the presence of the loved ones left behind, touching her pale cheeks full of life. What is that noise? Is that the silence of the water echoing in her ears, making her see the tears in mother's eyes, down her pink cheeks? Drop, drop. Where was the water? Where was it? It was buried, buried under the weight of the quiet walls, lying still in the darkness of their own existence. She dug the damp soil with her numb fingers, the dirt embedded in her rough nails. The odors stood in the air, covering the ceiling's wrecked surface. There it was. She saw the blink of calmness through the rotting soil, and suddenly, behind the closed door, thudder, and there lay one more. Reach. She understood that noise, could see the silence of that water the droplets that were lost away with the wind, now withstanding at the top of the stair, foreseeing the withered shadow behind her. She reads that light in a world. She now understands the infinity of the sky, the stillness of the silhouette, the depth of the stairs, and the door being closed. Amidst all that, she met the one more. Concluding my presentation, I hereby give you these five spaces, which are the translation of the spatial understanding of death as experienced in the narrative and as seen through Elliot's wasteland. These five spaces can act as an idea for the people to experience, to understand the metaphysical presence of death on a spiritual level, for only then one can truly understand the real meaning of life dwelt beneath the layers. With a state of mind of emotional detachment and loneliness that one feels, experiencing these spaces can serve as a balm to those mind states. It speaks out to one's own spiritual pain. These spaces can serve as pure ideas towards another architectural application. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions and queries, please contact on my email. Thank you.